Hi, Henrik. Good hey. morning. Hey, <laughs> long time. How are you? <laughs> Good. It's a long time. Very nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. You did not go to um, Vienna? <laughs> no, no. I just uh, just missed that uh, that conference completely and then I realized that it was there. So, so I'm staying at home this week. Oh, I see. Yeah, it was. Uh, there were a lot of folks who joined, I think, went there, but... Uh, even from the uh, projects, I think, and and also PromCon was going on right before, right? So it was just a lot of lot of things going on back to back. Yeah, it just a bit of mess because it's been a, it's been a huge storm. A bit too much. The, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw and, that uh, flooding. Lot yeah, of flooding. so the there's supposed to be meetups in different cities in Austria at the same time, and because of the flood, the train doesn't operate anymore. So it's been a bit of mess oh so then that's that's too problematic i mean it's definitely very hard to travel there hi everyone thank you for joining <laughs> today so um uh, let's kick off because i think um again hi jonah nice to see you hey good to see <laughs> thank you, you for too. joining <laughs> um so i i just wanted to kind of let's uh pull up the uh calendar the invite and the doc um and and you know we had a talk scheduled for today from uh the cap one team uh and unfortunately um that uh, engineer is actually out sick so he rescheduled for next for our next tag meeting in october beginning of october um so no worries but they are you know they didn't cancel it's just that and the engineer was sick so they wanted to kind of just take the next tag meeting to present so if you guys were here for the talk again don't be disappointed we will, do, we will have it next time um and uh i think i think a couple of things we wanted to kind of cover today one was uh jonah again congrats on uh pushing the jaeger updates as well as the open search foundation i think those are very exciting moves yeah um, for sure <laughs> took a long you, time to do the second yes, one took a, took <laughs> Actually, a long time i remember time. the day then we you know i was a part of the original team and yeah. you know when we decided to um you know keep an apache version available from aws it was just um, a great move you know folks were really excited and lot of engineers have contributed a lot of hard work into into you know making um, open search and its components better uh, so having an actual truly open source uh, foundation now will really help in getting to the next step so yeah, super exciting good. yeah for sure I'm, su I'm surprised you weren't there uh <laughs> <laughs> no, we have Open Search Con next week in your neck of the woods in San Francisco. Yes, yes, so I'll be there yes. next week. Oh, very cool. But I didn't didn't uh, think it was worth going to Vienna for. Yes, yes, uh, right. Because yeah. it's it's just that as uh, Henrik was saying, there's a lot of uh, flooding and you know local oh, bad weather going on. So, um... Henrik, you're in Vienna. I thought you were in Germany. No, no, I live in France. Uh, but uh, oh, okay. oh, you live in France? Oh, cool. Well, yeah. Neither. <laughs> where? <laughs> South of France, uh, where we. Oh my God! Are you? Are yeah, you, the, are you used, spoiled or what? No. <laughs> so we used to have the big sun, but uh, today it's raining. So yeah. I see. <laughs> Not bad. Hi, Shelpa. How are you? We were just uh, talking about uh, uh, the uh, talk from your team <laughs> having oh, postponed to next oh, next uh, Sorry month. about that. Yes. No worries, no worries. Um, again, uh, we are looking forward to the ta talk. So, you know, again, everybody joined in. Uh, this may not be a long, long meeting today, but, you know, we have some uh, some topics. Um, sure. And and again, you know, please just let us know whether the first meeting, which is on the first week or the third week, works for you, for your team, for the talk. Yeah, de definitely. I think um, first week um, should work. I'll, I'll definitely confirm with you. Okay, sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Jonah, did you want to give an update on the Jaeger changes? I think that's uh, actually yeah, a can. Good, sure. good place to start. Yeah, we just got the first build out. So we uh, have been doing a pretty big project to re-platform Jaeger on top of OpenTelemetry. 
So when open telemetry started, uh, it kind of took the same shape as Jaeger in terms of like the collector and how it works and what it does. Uh, and now that open telemetry is matured and been adopted, we're rebuilding Jaeger around open telemetry collector more or less. We've implemented all of our APIs on top of it so that it still works the way that Jaeger did. But now you configure it the same way as the collector with a YAML file. And we basically are using exporters in terms oh, of cool. writing to storage and writing yeah. to Kafka. We have our own implementations because of the formatting, um, but it lets you do you know, the same type of head-based sampling, tail-based sampling, uh, and also all the other contributions we've done for uh, deterministic sampling and file-based sampling and that type of thing. So it's a pretty big project. We released the first release candidate uh, this week. So you can actually get the new binaries. Uh, I've been working really hard on docs because uh, thankfully I have time. I'm between jobs. So I get to spend time working on documentation. <laughs> um, so we're making some progress on the docs. Um, and we're also finish finishing up the uh, Helm chart and the operator in the next couple of months. Um, but we're probably going to release the first version of 2.0 at KubeCon. That's the goal. Oh, very cool. Um, awesome. And uh, we also did something really interesting with Open Telemetry. I think we're the first people to use the new uh, extension framework of the collector. Mm -hmm. So what we did is we implemented the Jaeger user interface as an extension on the collector so that the UI for Jaeger actually runs inside the same process as the collector. And right. so depending on how you configure it, you can make the single binary of Jaeger do lots of different things. It can act as a Kafka sender, Kafka receiver. It can act as a you know, telemetry processor, as a collector, or even just as a everything all in one. So it's kind of a pretty cool design that uh you know that yuri and the team put together so very nice yeah and question to what you mentioned on the operator have you thought yeah. about um uh, uh, uh improving the open temperature collector uh operator sorry to, to avoid having two distinct uh operators and add a CRD yes. that, that deploys the jaeger as well we were trying to do that but i think we're going to end up doing our own so thankfully pavel uh, at Red Hat is both a maintainer and the main author of the Jaeger operator, and he's a maintainer of Jaeger and Open Telemetry uh, operator as well. So he's kind of suggesting that we don't, in fact, do that. We have a current intern program going on right now through the Linux Foundation internship, and we have a person working on the operator this semester which just started two weeks ago, I guess. So uh, so he's making some progress on it. I just spoke to him a few hours ago. Um, but yeah, we decided to probably do it differently, but we'll, we'll see how it goes because I know Pavel's been working with the, uh, the person working on it. So, but yeah, initially we thought we would be able to just build it into the existing operator or do something like that, but... I guess uh, we're doing it this way instead. So. I see. So the idea is to build a new new implementation and then kind of replace the old one. Well, we have an existing Jaeger operator, one. so it's just yeah. kind of updating it. Uh, okay. And okay. we may have to change. I guess some of the tooling is changing around operators. Mm -hmm. I'm not super plugged into it, but... There's a bunch of changes going on with the operator framework and the tooling. So we're trying to build it so that it's like compatible go forward. But okay, very good. Very good. I'm not I'm not super plugged into what's going on with operators. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's a bunch of well, changes. That's a good call and, out. I mean, again, folks yeah, can, you know, yeah. who are working on operators can actually help yeah. test as well as help uh, you know, contribute. 
Yep. Cool. I um, think I have um, a question with regards to um, tail sampling. I'm curious, like, um, how is that going to be different from um, what Open Telemetry offers? So it's the same. However, Jaeger does some uh, has some unique features that Open Telemetry doesn't have, which we've mostly implemented upstream, but there are also things that are implemented inside Jaeger itself. And the main, I, I can send you an article about some of the differences, but the main thing is that at Uber, they wanted to be able to reconfigure sampling dynamically. Mm. So they have like an ability to define sampling within a file and it's dynamically reloaded and the instrumentation will pick it up. So the use case there is like, if you're having a customer with a problem, you could actually change the sampling in real time. Um, so they, they've that's part been part of Jaeger for many years. And we had to implement all of that stuff upstream in the collector, but it also requires uh, an endpoint that's exposed on Jaeger to collect the data from like this, the file basically serving the file and all of that kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's but pretty I, awesome. Have... Yeah. Do, do you plan to contribute back to hotel also or would it, it stay is. just within Hager? It does. Yeah. We did all that stuff already actually. Um, Great. Yeah. But but because we're also investing big time in tail sampling um, at Capital One. So yeah. I wanted to show like um, what more is coming as part of this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'll send you the kind of like the implementation. The new docs are written. They're just we we have the new docs. Uh, they're just published in like a hidden URL for now because we're changing the build process and the okay. release. A lot of other Makes stuff. Sense. But yeah. But I'll I'll post a link in the doc um, here in just a minute. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. That's that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah. um, again, and if you, you know, are looking at any of these areas being feature compatible right, back into hotel also, you know, is there a, is there a tag with which these issues are maintained on Jaeger or? For the uh, two does, Yeah. How does one find out, you know, like where there's an opportunity to kind of help and contribute? Um, we... We do have things tagged as V2, but they're more things that we're doing to get up to the release. Mm -hmm. um, everything, when we release version two, it'll be fully compatible with version one. Okay. So there's not going to be any feature gaps at that I see. point. I see, I see. Uh, the things that we're missing are also things like when Jaeger came out, there was there was no operator because the operator framework didn't exist. So it was yeah. added after. Right, so right. like we can technically <laughs> release version two now, but we feel like we should have a Helm chart and we should have an operator. But I don't think that those are really blockers. They're more things that people are going to need as the project, you know, starts getting adopted. Mm -hmm. So are uh, there specific features that you have decided to keep in the collector, hotel collector, which you will inherit into Jaeger? Uh, under the hood, or uh, you know, have you had to kind of re-implement some of these parts? So we um, we have been implementing things upstream uh, that we've needed already in the past. So like the okay. adaptive yeah. sampling that I was talking about, that was actually done over the last year, year and a half, because we knew mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we needed to do it, and mm -hmm. people are switching obviously and not using. Uh, open tracing anymore so we knew we had to implement all of that upstream okay uh, okay so a lot of that stuff we've kind of been this has been in the works for like a year and a half at this point in terms of the pre-work that was done now we're just like figuring out well finishing up some of the pieces that weren't done and then figuring out all the ci cd and release process all the fun stuff that happens uh after so okay yeah that's yeah. pretty cool that's very cool yeah. yep so I'm again gonna... hopefully oh. you know that i will have a lot more of the hotel contributors also contributing into jaeger because there is a as you know jonah there's such a large tracing community within hotel yeah so uh, sure. again you know 
some of the folks contribute, but not not everybody does, right? So it's really nice to see this unification. Yeah, we definitely need more um, maintainers on Jaeger because there's like four of us, I think yep. now, yep. or five, mm -hmm. and there's probably only like two of us doing most, most of, the, most work. of the work. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of. Uh, we're always looking for more. We have a good amount of contributors, but we need more maintainers. It's like always mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. So, uh, is it relatively easy to become a maintainer on Jaeger, or is it just uh, consistency and maintain, maintaining? Yeah, it's just like consistency, and then like helping out with releases. We have a pretty mm -hmm. well documented. We rotate through the maintainers with releases, so like. Mm -hmm. Basically, every four or five months you do a release, but it's well documented. Um, and other than that, it's just kind of answering questions, reviewing code, mm -hmm. any kind of contributions. Um, but yeah, we're always looking for more help. Um, yeah. Silpa, the link is in the doc for the adaptive sampling. It's a couple of years old. Um, but that blog explains the functionality that's available today in Jaeger and is obviously part of V2. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Very cool. Very cool. Thanks, Jonah. Yeah. This and and exciting. there was also a comment in the chat from VJ. Uh, yes, it is SDK specific. So, um, it depends on the SDK specifically. I think there's like three or four SDKs that implement it. It's clearly not all the languages that do it uh, today. So, so we've done it. Are in there the are there specific SDKs that have been um, yeah I, kind of prioritized? I think, um, well, it's more like based on contributions. Like our team isn't doing the implementations there. So like if a company needs it in some language, then they go ahead and, and implement it. Mm -hmm. um, there's a, it's in the documentation. I can also put a link in there. I was just looking for it. Um, so I know it's implemented on like some of the languages. But this is kind of a Jaeger feature, so it's pretty specific to people using Jaeger. Mm -hmm. uh, not that any, I mean, anyone could implement it on another tracing system, but I haven't seen uh, any other system that supports it. I'm just, I'll grab the... Um, Trying to find, I know there was one kind of overview. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta find it. No worries, Jonah. Just add it when when you find it. Yeah, I will. <laughs> we can for sure. Yep. We we'll look for it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. All right, uh, Matt, did you add the update from the TOC? Uh, did you want to yes. call something? I had. I had two kind of topics that I kind of put late on here. Um, yeah, if you no worries. <laughs> briefly, I want to start with the one after the TOC updates. I'm just okay. dropping in now. Um, maybe since you're sharing screen, if you have Slack, you could chase the link. But um, I just wanted to have a brief note. We had a solicitation. Did you want to? Did you want to share? What is? What does this mean? Uh, well, I, I didn't see that, that that cloud native that that link I just put into how to handle solicitations uh, in our Slack channel. So the original um, um, post was deleted after I responded. It was any mm. somebody from Shift basically just put in a product pitch for something built with open source, I think, uh, but not open sourced and not a member of the CNCF. And mm -hmm. so I had to thought a little bit about how to respond. I would love any feedback on this. Um, and I went looking to see if in either the tag policies or charters, you know, it, it became my fiance and I were, were, were chasing it down. She, she does contract law. And so we we're like, well, what's the right way to do this so that we don't have to ad hoc respond? Because this isn't the first time that 
tag channels are used for solicitation. So <laughs> I took a whack at it, but I think it would make sense to open a TLC issue saying, hey, how should tags respond to solicitations? Because while our charters have what's in scope and out of scope and the TLC's uh, documentation on what tags are um, uh, uh, kind of implies that it's not the right place for people to come advertise, uh, I realize that there's nothing handy to just point to. And and this is so. The third I think time. Matt, that's a very good question you raised because I haven't really seen even in the tag in the TOC documentation anything Correct. regarding tags handling. Yeah, solicitations. We, we the, looking for it and we didn't find it. Yeah, so. the the what we did on OTEL though on Open Telemetry is that we explicitly because you know Open Telemetry has a lot of vendors as well as other country you know. Um, other, many other folks who join in, um, end users excluded in one sense, but the end users, you know, don't come in with solicitations yeah. most of the but, time. But um, the point being that we did actually explicitly create and uh, publish a uh, marketing policy, um, you know, for the project where, um, you know, m most of the f vendors who are involved um can do some things and cannot do some things ex explicitly right. and that was actually reviewed by the gc and then you know uh, open for uh, feedback from the community and then finally published ratified and published right so um yeah. when we went up to the toc at that time this was a couple of years ago now um there they fundamentally said that you know it's a project by project if you're seeing a lot and you have a gc then the gc should take care of it so yeah so i i specifically and explicitly didn't want to be punitive my, my first sure, response sure. you know that i typed in an edit thing was like this is the wrong place this is inappropriate you know um but then i caught myself and i said well many times you know i, I did it I, I i checked the landscape and and you know of the of the well over a thousand members of the of the CNCF, I don't believe any shift is one of them. And this could have been someone from their sales or marketing team, like just not knowing what they stepped into, but that's a potential member. They could have mm -hmm. engineers, you know, so I wanted to make, to, to, to have whatever boilerplate language we come up with, uh, you know, be welcoming and informative, but also firm that you don't advertise here, but what here's what you can do here, or here's where you can go. And they didn't respond. They deleted the, the original message, but it was a total pitch, you know, for a paid product. But um, I did want to make sure that in our response, we don't just come up with like, you know, you can't do that here, go away, but rather here's what we do here. Here's where you can go. And, and oh, by the way, you, you know, it's an opportunity. For, it's a bid for connection is how I read it. Right. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and for a salesperson, a bid for connection is a pitch. Yep, <laughs> so, yep, um, absolutely. so I wanted to make sure that that was so I, I'm offline or otherwise I'd welcome any feedback on my initial uh, I mean I I think response. that uh, do you have a doc started Matt there because no, I, I would to actually I, start I, an issue all... on the tag and then we can co I'll do that. you know ask the talk uh, the TOC to review but um, it might be a good thing to actually start a doc and just you know have draft an initial you know set of areas that we want to address and we can work on it together as a everyone here right. on the team I agree. Um, I'm actually, I'll assign it to myself and make an issue. Uh, like Jonah, I'm also between gigs. Um, so I've got some extra time on my hands. Yeah, yeah, no worries. I um, mean, again, we can all help. And um, I would say that I can I can definitely add links for, you know, existing policies from the larger projects that exist. Um, yeah, and, you know, again, issue, this is not help. unusual. Uh -huh. um, uh, the other thing that is very interesting that's also starting to happen is that a lot of the uh, and Jonah, you might find this amusing is that um, uh, a bunch of you know um, groups that are actually working on enabling um, you know models and AI uh, models for um, chatbots or you know for uh, different documentation examples are now starting to target the open source projects and the open source repos to kind of, you know, run their, um, you know, implementations through in order to uh, not only train, but also go and suggest PRs for fixes. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's again, 
sometimes it's very very um uh strange because you know you have like glad to happy kind of changes that are being made by the by you know some kind of a bot that's running um in yeah. the background and then those are being filed as prs to yeah. You know, and and what that is doing is at least I can tell you because we've been looking, seeing some of these even on hotel is that, um, they are to test out first of all, you know, like what what the their implementation can do, but on the other hand, it's also that it causes a lot of, um, <clears throat> review lift, if you will, uh, on yeah. projects which are already strained for maintainers, right? So. Yeah. It's, and get ready, we're a... gonna have bots chatting with bots through via GitHub is <laughs> yes, like the way to call it. Well, mean... we're, we use Dosu, which is re, does PR reviews and it's a bot. So it yeah. like it answers <laughs> questions from users, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Uh but yeah, I could see it like talking to the other bot that's submitting a PR for docs. And, yeah, who knows so, what happens know, as long as we don't have to do target. That, um, yeah. but, um, you know, again, that's something that, that we might want to also kind of, you know, would be interesting to have some kind of an call out on that, you know, this is a use case where there is no policy per se, because, you know, again, yeah. some of this is totally legit, you know, because people will use, uh, assistance for helping them code, helping them, you know, write, uh, it's totally okay, but it's also that you know, from an open source perspective where contributions are really very, you know, appreciated and valued across humans, <laughs> you know, bot con based oh. contributions and, yeah, and you know, yeah, kind of gaming the system with it is is a new phenomenon. Yeah. There. <laughs> so, you know, I, I do I do think that for things like this, you know, when 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 people reach out and make first contact, I mean, bots can be helpful. I don't again, I don't want to lose the human touch. But, right, right. Exactly. Um, <laughs> this would, it would make this gen, this is a good general topic, though. Um, yeah. I wonder if the working group, the, the AI working group that we launched last year out of this tag and app delivery uh, would be a good place to have this conversation. Um, I don't know. I mean, we could uh, even do it in the tag context because, yeah. you know, the, well, we could do it here the and then bring our findings there, you know. Sure, sure. Because, our, you know, we are kind of seeing that phenomenon starting to happen on the large projects because, you know, there is, again, a lot of, uh, you know, implementation, experimentation ongoing with new models coming out. And that's all cool. Yep. But it's also that the projects which are already strained for maintainers in general, you know, can can they actually handle that kind of, uh, you know, scrutiny for every every issue, yeah. right? And every PR. Cool. So, <laughs> all right, cool. So uh, if you want to scroll up, I can give a brief update from the last, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. which Absolutely. was earlier this morning. Um, yeah. I didn't want to go right into just a link a link dive before talking about something a little more fun and human. Yeah, no worries. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, you'll notice my background beginning to improve. I moved over the last month. So <laughs> I'm in my new space here. But um, a couple of things caught my eye uh, uh, from the TOC meeting earlier this morning. Um, this wasn't talked about, but we they did walk through the board and open telemetry. The graduation TOC uh, issue exists now. Austin pushed it. Um, last yeah, month. it has it has been open for a while now. So yeah, it's been, been open for a while since March, but um, there have yeah. been some new updates. Um, yeah. and I would expect that to start rolling. So just a heads mm -hmm. up, if, if anybody wants to chime in and follow along, mm -hmm. um, the, the link is there. It's a yeah, by all means, you know, folks should read and you know, add your support or questions. Even if it's just an emoticon, yeah. Uh, but but yeah, um, surprisingly, the people look at that. Um, so that was one. Uh, there's the open cost incubation proposal. The open cost um, gave a presentation when they moved from sandbox or when they wanted to move into the sandbox over a year ago. I want to say a year and a half ago. Um, we'd have to dig down through the notes, but they they um, they Matt from Open Cost uh, at the time it was a very new thing. Um, and we had some some advice for them, which they appear to have taken around how they build their community. But um, I believe uh, they're waiting on Alalita and or I um, to, to chime in a paragraph, but they've moved on to, to interviews and such. But I've, I've given a link there. That's sort of another observability related project that is now applied for incubation. Um, I support that as well. Um, there is a tracking issue. 
um, for all, all of the tags have in this tracking issue um, a similar list. Um, and these are all check boxes. None of them are checked yet. That's why it looks like blank when I copied it. Um, but this tracking issue for tag documentation, there's a, a wholesale push to um, uh, consolidate how tags run and remove some of the overhead because we've been saying uh, every, every other tag meeting for a while over the summer, uh, tag chairs kind of had some open forum and open discussion. And out of that came, hey, it, it, there's a lot of boilerplate overhead Mm -hmm. in how this is all managed and there's a lot of turnover uh for example amy who you may know from the toc is no longer mm -hmm. with the ncf so Step down. Uh, yeah. the meeting this morning yeah after i don't even know five six years or something or maybe even longer um she's amazing but uh so the t the new toc has new members they are figuring stuff out they are moving to github projects the new ones and now they have kanban boards for all this stuff instead of like a, a squirrely spreadsheet that's locked down so um, but this is something that uh, if anyone wanted to chip in uh, and, and help with some of this, cool. Otherwise, it'll it'll fall to leads and chairs. But anyone in the community can help with this. I think. Uh, I think I think here, Matt, you might want to kind of call out a clear call for action where what folks can actually do here, like comment. Yeah, yeah. Or... I'm gonna read through this. This is all all new to me. I just mean like we as a tag have a have some house cleaning to do. We've kind of been operating with lots of cool talks, and then when needed. Um, project um, maintenance, but but as we've said, there's a lot of opportunity is, is what I'm saying, and perhaps a more well-formed call to action and an email makes sense here. But if folks wanted to contribute to the tag, there's a lot of like um, administrative stuff and a backlog of, well, I don't want to say a backlog, but an opportunity, you know, to kind of everything from- Work well, on stuff. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, the CNCF has done work. So we have yeah. like project spaces and much more cool front doors for a website that we don't have to implement, for example, that we can just mesh into. So there's been, there's immense opportunities for people. That, yeah, that I, think, I think I uh, think one of the things that might be useful here, um, Matt, to the you know call outs you're making here is to actually, I know the TOC has been working on numerous um, improvements and also, you know, having discussions with the various tags on um, getting feedback and also with the larger, you know, more, more, you know, uh, active tags such as runtime, which is, you know, a very big, very big, big, huge uh, community, um, having discussions, but I think it might be useful to have them actually present to the tag what some of these improvements are, because they might be doing all of these, you know, projects, for example, moving to discussions, GitHub discussions, you know, and many of these structural changes which they're making, but they're not necessarily, you know, obvious to folks who are not tied into right. their day to day, right? So not even the tags, <laughs> even the tags actually most of the time yeah. don't, uh, or the projects for that matter, don't have that visibility or, you know, the time to actually go and uh, track DOC improvements, right? So I think that I'd probably vote for them, inviting them to come and <laughs> talk to us so that well, folks can just catch up. Got, <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess that's a great segue to the, my last point. I didn't put a bullet for it, but um, you know, it looks like on Friday we're scheduling a, a tag leads meeting to do some planning. So I think we've got a lot of open spots in our calendar. Uh, and so that's another thing that we can do. We can reach out. Um, uh, I, I could reiterate something from last meeting since there's a, only a few people at the meeting and uh, case in point, there's some YouTube automation that we can fold into as well to auto update, auto upload videos and things. But um, two weeks ago uh, in the TOC meeting, uh, another uh, invite that we can send out uh, is tag environmental sustainability uh, is looking for feedback from this tag uh, on uh, benchmarks uh, for uh, you know, metrics around measuring the full cost of cloud apps, including AI LLM workloads, which are much different in their in in their resource constraints and envelopes, for example. Uh, and and so uh, we they're waiting for us to reach out. Uh, uh, we 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 said that you know tag observability would certainly be interested in learning more. So there's going to be more opportunities for cross tag collaboration and i think that's one of the most immediate ones that that came up two weeks ago 
Uh, and I think we yeah, I mean, they have been interested. I think the best, easiest thing is for them to actually open up an issue on mm -hmm. on the tags repo, and then you know we can take that up as an action item. It's it's just that I think it's hard for folks to go and you know, go and reach out to folks um, asynchronously. It's more, exactly. I think, easier if you kind of do encourage folks to create an issue and and kind of well, have yeah. that. So I'll respond again to them uh, in Slack and I'll, I'll either, we can either open an issue for them and have them fill it out. Since yeah. This hasn't a whole lot. Like but, what, are, uh, what are they asking us to invite to them to come do like a, a 10 or 15 minute talk about what this is. Cause it's actually pretty interesting and, and it's an observability concern, I think. Uh, yeah. And then, you know, and then we can kind of turn that into something more concrete. It was a bit hand wavy at the TLC meeting. So, okay. Um, okay. They've, they've mentioned this okay. before in prior meetings. So that's why I was, uh, I would, I would rather have something tangible from them in terms of, you know, what to review uh, on, you know, their asks, right? On the, their requests. Uh, for yeah, the tag, I understand where they are. They're kind of at a brainstormy, uh, needing feedback and input. I don't think they have like a concrete thing to review. I actually think they want to come present their problem they're chomping on, uh, and they know that there are things like open telemetry, and they don't have to invent how to do metrics, for example, right? So I yeah, think yeah, exactly. So so this is more of a um early stage, you know, meeting of the minds. So so I don't know. We can we can sort it out, you know, whether it's an issue or a yeah. Let's follow up. Let's open up an issue, issue because I think it just makes it easier for folks, folks to yeah. hear it. Yep. That's and all I and have. okay, Richard. Matt, that's awesome. Thank you. Uh, the only other call I did want to make is that um, the TOC had reached out. Uh, this is when uh, last month Persis was being reviewed for by mm -hmm. the TOC for acceptance into the sandbox um, as a sandbox project and we had submitted a you know a, the TOC reached out and I was like okay we need to do a review so we Chris and I kind of uh, teamed up to review uh, you know persist in different uh, both UI as well as technical features uh, and Chris actually had uh, some folks from the Netflix team huge huge thanks to them uh, on you know adding more uh, in-depth details on the on the report that was submitted to the TOC. So I did uh, add an issue on our tag uh, list for linking to the report. So if you guys are interested, you know please take a look. But uh, Persis is exciting because it does you know provide an open source uh, visualization engine. It's uh, you know led by contributors from Red Hat, from other companies uh, who are actually very actively uh, contributing to the project. And it is, you know, kind of a Grafana comparable, uh, if you will, in the world of visualization, which is super important in observability. Um, and it has actually landed into the, um, into the CNCF. So that's really exciting because I think that this also, you know, gives an opportunity for many of the projects that have kind of built their own UIs over time. Uh, you, Jonah, Uyghur UI comes to mind <laughs> as one, one of the areas which has always been, you know, very heavily used and really made the Jaeger very popular, but also to kind of leverage some more resources, perhaps with the Persis, uh, you know, uh, project to be able to, you know, kind of grow and unify the UI perhaps into Persis also, right? So it's an, again, an integration opportunity. Uh, and um, also, uh, you know, there is a need uh, for sophisticated visualization al along with dynamic uh, analysis, if you will, which both includes ML and non-ML analysis for observability data to be integrated as you know plugins into that universe. So lots of opportunity for you know being really able to grow the project out. And uh, obviously from end users, there's a lot of interest and excitement because it really does provide the alternatives that, that end users are looking for. Um, the other project, which is you know super exciting again as we started the meeting with, is Open Search because Open Search also helps in filling in some uh, 
level of support and improvements for um, visualizations. Again, they also have a visualization uh, engine that was derived from Kibana, just like Grafana was, um, which is called dashboards. And um, I hope that, you know, that dashboards project is also, uh, you know, collaborating with Persis because I think uh, today it's pretty tightly bundled with open search, but there, these are some exciting, you know, changes that are happening as we, as we speak, uh, where the CNCF, you know, project board and observability at least has had some significant gaps in the uh, ability to actually provide a fully end-to-end -end open source solution for end users, right? I mean, where you've had um, Jaeger filling in a lot of that, you know, heavy lifting for tracing over a long period of time. You have had um, Prometheus and open telemetry and, you know, um, coming in to kind of support the collection, uh, you know, and ingestion uh, workflows, but then you have storage as well as um, uh, the ability to visualize, which has been quite weak in the CNCF landscape, right? So um, again, as, as time goes by, hopefully we'll be able to augment some of these projects and innovate <laughs> together. <laughs> UX of open source is always painful. <laughs> so like yes. we do all the back end stuff and then the front end we're like, uh, we don't want to deal with that. Yes, so. exactly. <laughs> yeah, we, we, all, you know, we all have it in our heads. Right. Um, I, I've added some links to both Persis and for anyone interested in, in how sandbox projects are tracked, which is separate than the incubation and graduation. Um, I've, I've put some links in there as well. Um, Cool, cool. And there's also an issue on the uh, on our on our repo, Matt. If you want to link to that, yeah, for Persis. I'll, I'll, I'll dig that one out right now for the Persis one as well. Yeah, it's um, in the issues list. Um, so mm -hmm. again, huge thanks to Chris for kind of pulling the weight on that review. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All right. That said, uh, I think, you know, a um, couple of opportunities. I did want to call this out explicitly. If any of you are interested or have a little bit of time in becoming a tech lead, you know, you're welcome to uh, ping me or Matt um, or both of us, you know, on uh, your interest uh, or anybody else that you would like to recommend who is working in the area of observability and has been doing some technical, you know, deep engineering work. Um, all of us have been involved in the open source projects and, you know, continue to kind of work through different areas. But again, technical leadership also requires, you know, some more uh, diving into, you know, some of the code for the projects as well as, um, um, you know, enabling and helping with POCs and also mentoring, um, you know, engineers for other engineers to kind of come and get involved in different projects. So it's a great opportunity. Um, again, uh, for any of you who's interested, I know you guys have all been involved for a long time. Uh, please don't be shy. It's a it's a good way to get involved and also stay involved in the CNCF. So uh, let me know. Uh, and of course, um, again, at this point, we are running with uh, two tag co-chairs, but if anybody is interested, again, um, you know, in being another co-chair, we do have the opportunity to have a third co-chair. Uh, and uh, if, you know, you have the time to be able to dedicate to actually driving and pulling in the community to participate uh, and also share um, experiences and implementations, that's an uh, opportunity to consider. So please don't be shy. If you know somebody who's interested, also point them to us. It's always nice to have more folks involved because it just helps us also all in kind of working with each other. And, you know, Chris, uh, Ken, as well as Vijay have done a phenomenal job on, you know, kind of leading our work groups. Uh, and also I've asked them and pestered them to be more, <laughs> get more involved as tech leads. So uh, again, but, the, but again, my request is this is an open, uh, you know, invite. <laughs> so if you are interested and have a little bit of time, 
uh, please do <laughs> reach out to me. And there is a process for getting involved. So, you know, it's like we have to, uh, so therefore just, just, you know, let's chat. All right, that's it. I think we are at time. Uh, any so other? Should we should we end with random dopamine? Does yeah, anyone totally. want to see like a super cool nineteen thirties <laughs> couch that in nineteen seventy one someone reupholstered <laughs> that I'm in the middle of fixing? Look at that. Look at this. <laughs> Where did you find it? <laughs> wow, this is a cool couch. In it fact, is the cushions have metal springs inside them. And no so, way. So it was it was hand carved and built locally here in Massachusetts in 1931. Wow! Um, and, we, and and we rescued it from a relative who was gonna. It's it's alert pretty it. so in pretty good condition actually compared. Yeah, to being along 19th. the bottom there's a bunch of hand carvings. It's... So in a future tag meeting behind me will be this like super cool, swanky <laughs> 70s couch. Um, okay. So it will be like it, over time, you know. We'll see it as I get set up. It's it's a cool color, so that totally it goes with your wall. <laughs> yeah, I have cushions, but I'll leave it there. Cushions will be there next next meeting. Thank you, everyone. It's nice. All right, to see you. thank you, everyone. Happy September. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Thank, thank you. you. See you. Bye. See you. Bye. 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 Bye.